Okay, so, hi. Um, tonight we're going to draw, we're going to go back to drawing a house. And, or in this video, we're going to draw a house. And this is the house of Jack Harrington. Jack is the little bunny rabbit in my story. Jack was brought up in a house filled with, all, with bunnies, but uh, the character himself always feel, felt isolated and alone, even with all these little bunnies around him like he didn't have a friend in the family. Uh, so Jack grows up to be an angry little bunny. That's just part of the story. And works it through with the other characters in the book who are very patient and kind with him, even though he can be very grumpy. But regardless, we're going to draw the house he grew up in. And it's a top hat and a bunny hutch. The bunny hutch is how they go in, and then they come into this big room, which is the top hat. Now, I have a thing about top hats. I grew up um, in in a very old Victorian home uh, that my great uncle Oren built in 1889. Great uncle Oren Kroll. And he had a top hat, and I actually own it now. It's mine. It's in storage, but it's mine. And so I, I loved that top hat. That, and this is also a nod to the Mad Hatter, in Alice in Wonderland. The Mad Hatter in Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland was my favorite story growing up and when I was in fifth grade, in fifth grade, my fifth grade teacher, Mr. Alan Kavanaugh, had us memorize um, uh, poems from Alice in Wonderland. Tweedledee and Tweedledum, The Jabberwocky, um, and my favorite was Walrus and the Carpenter. I love that poem. And so this is my nod, though, to the Mad Hatter. Uh, so this is what we're going to work on today, is this. We're, let's um, grab our paper. Once again, I'm not using my fancy paper that I prefer. We're using scrap paper. Okay, we're just using what we have around the house. Now to start the top hat, just to get an idea of size, we're going to draw the top which is just a curvy line, curvy line like that, and then two lines coming down. Your top hat can be fat, it can be skinny, it can be anything you want, it doesn't matter. And then we'll draw, there, just the two lines. Then we'll draw the bottom. That's what's going to sit on the ground, is that line. We're going to draw the brim. And there are other components to the top hat, but this is what we're going to worry about right now. Okay, there's the brim. Let's grab our pens. Where am I? There. Once again, I'm using Sharpies. I've got my fat Sharpie. So you grab yours or whatever you're going to use. We just draw. The lines don't have to be straight. They don't even need to connect. They can just be dashes, dashes and dots. You can lay your pen on its side. You can use a point. It's whatever you would like to do. I like my top hat to feel a little worn out, so I don't put in all the sides. I don't put in all the lines or connect them all. I like a little space in between. I'm going to draw the brim, which again is just a half circle. And I give it a little, I turn it up just a little bit at the end, just a little bit. And then the base. And I don't really want you to worry about the base too much. Because um, I think what we should do is put in some the indication of some grass. Because they probably don't mow the lawn very often. Because they're bunny rabbits and there's a lot going on there. So my grass is just lines. Kind of sticking up and going all over the place, like that. Let me try that one higher. 
and then drawing the bottom. Just putting in dots and dashes for the bottom of the top hat. Just like that. Okay. Now we're going to draw, there's a, um, on all top hats there's a piece of silk, like a silk ribbon that goes across it. So I'm going to cut some of this extra paper off. Because we'll need this as we go along. Let me see if this will work. Nah, that's not quite big enough. I need a fatter ribbon. And I can see, what's nice about this scrap paper is you can kind of see through it. And see the uh, magic marker. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to trace my little, my lines for the, for the hat and the brim. But I'm going to come, I'm going to take these lines, this uh, ribbon, the ribbon lines, so the lines for the ribbon, and make them a little bit wider than the top hat. I'm going to make my ribbon a little bit higher. See? So tracing, tracing these lines as best you can. Don't worry about being too exact. This is just for fun. I'm taking those side lines and making them a little bit wider than the hat. Let's see how this goes, shall we? Grab our pen. And I'm just going to draw a ribbon at the top. Ribbon at the side and come down. I'm not going to draw the bottom of the ribbon. Okay. Just like that. Cut that out. cut along the pencil line. In fact, I'm going to cut right on the pencil line and hopefully this will work out fine. Again, not too worried about it. Oh, that's perfect! Look at that worked out perfectly. Okay. No, pen, no pen line on the bottom of this, just the pencil. And when we go to glue it on, it's going to glue on perfectly. It's going to fit really well, rather. I'm erasing some of my lines. Now, part of the thing about the Mad Hatter from uh, Alice in Wonderland is he had a piece of paper that was sticking out of his, the brim of his hat, sticking out of this ribbon part. And it gave the size of his hat, five and a half or ten and a half, I can't remember. But it was the size of his hat. And I took that and kind of turned it a little bit. Because this house, the house that Jack grew up in, was not very warm and welcoming. They didn't have guests over. They didn't have friends over. So I made a piece of paper sticking out of the out of the ribbon that says go away. You do not have to do that. You don't have to put in a piece of paper at all. Or you can put one in that says friends are welcome or whatever you would like. Happy home. But I'm going to make, I am going to make a piece of paper that sticks out of there. So I'm going to, oh, let's move this down. There we go. So I'm trying, going to try and figure out the angle of it now. I don't want it sticking straight up. 
I want it a little bent. But it's going to come out of the brim. I'm going to have it kind of leaning over a little bit. having mine lean over just a little bit like that. Okay. And then I'm going to write go away. You can write whatever you want. But what I do when I'm making signs or I have to do lettering is I'll split the area I'm going to write in down the middle. Then I draw lines that tell me how tall the letters are going to be. Okay, that's what I do. My first word is go. It has two letters in it. G-O. So I know they're going to sit right about there. The second word is away. It has four letters in it. So I want two to sit on this side of the line and two to sit on that side of the line. Pardon me. So that's what it's going to look like. Let's grab our big fat pen again. I'm going to draw the outside of the paper. Now I'm going to draw my letters. One day we'll talk about how I draw my letters. But tonight we're just going to do... actually tell you a little story about my letters. They're based on a sign artist. I knew where I grew up, or I knew his signs, and Bugs Bunny. The artist who uh, did illustrating and lettering for Bugs Bunny. So that's what it's based on. Nate Smith. Bugs Bunny. All right, there it is. There's my. There's a little piece of paper that's going to go in the in the um, piece of silk, the ribbon around the top. Hat. Cutting that out pretty quickly. Again, not cutting right on the black line, leaving white space around it. stick. My favorite dollar store glue sticks. First I'm going to glue down. Okay. Oops. Okay, I just tried. I think I left the cap off that one too long. Grab another one. Gosh, I always, thank goodness I always have backup. So I'm putting down the brim. I'm going to figure out where do I want this, or putting down the ribbon rather, where do I want this, or the brim ribbon. Oh, oh, I forgot, I'm sorry. Wait, 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 first we have to cut out the uh, top hat. What am I thinking? My goodness.
There we go. Now I'm ready to glue. Okay, so I'm taking my ribbon once again, putting it here. I think I want it kind of sticking off like that. So I'm going to... Not too much glue, because it'll buckle a lot if we put too much down. We don't want it to buckle. We don't want it to get all wrinkly. Now I'm going to glue the ribbon down. Just putting it on lightly so we don't get wrinkles. There we go. There. Now we've got a top hat. Let's add a little bit of shading here. This makes me nervous because I don't want to mess up. So I think what I'm going to do to let myself know when where the shading is going to stop, I think I'm going to do this. Drawing very lightly. Two sections coming down so I know where the shading is going to stop. Now with the lines on the shading on my hat, because the hat is a little bit curved, I curve the lines when I'm drawing them down, I curve them down a little bit. Again, you don't have to do this. You don't. This is just what I like to do. And look at my lines. Dot, 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 line, line, dot, 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 dot. Okay. Give it a line right there. See? They're horribly uneven. They don't connect. There's a lot of dots involved, and it's okay. I'm not even sure I'm doing it the way I intended to. But I'm just going to keep going. Okay. Yeah, I don't love it, but it's all right. Now let's draw the rabbit, rabbit hutch. This part. The housey looking part of it. It's sticking up a little bit. Let's glue that down. So we're going to grab a piece of paper, cut that off. just going to grab a piece of paper, I'm going to put the top hat over it, so we can use the top hat to visually measure where we're going to go. think easier. Alright, so we don't want it too high, and we don't want it too low, we're just going to draw where it feels about right. And for me, the roof of the hutch feels right just about there, touching the hat right about there. Yeah, there we go. I need the top hat, the bottom of the top hat, to line up with this piece of paper. Just like that. The roof coming down just like that. Let me see this. Is that too wide? That's a little wide. Then a line coming down here for the side of the house. Okay. See if I can pick this up so you can really see it. There we go. Okay. Now the bottom of the house, because they're going to go up a ladder to get in. This is going to be off the ground a little bit, like a regular hutch. Almost like a chicken house. Second line right there for the roof. Okay. And I'm going to draw a 
second line here. Bring it down to the ground. Second line here. Okay. And then draw. Whoop. Pen. Uh, so there we go. Then I'm gonna draw. We're gonna draw the um, the doorway in. Just another square or a slightly rectangle shape. And a second line there on the outside of the door. So we've got a one, we've got the inside of the door, and then we've got the wood going around the outside, the frame of the door. Okay, why don't we grab our pen and start drawing that in? Now don't forget, there's going to be shingles, and so you can draw it kind of bumpy, if you like, because the top of the roof is never going to be perfectly smooth. It's going to have shingles. So I did a bumpy line, and now I'm doing a straight ur line, a straight ur line for the frame of the roof. Whoop. That's all wonky. I'm going to draw a straight line with all my little dots and dashes. The outside of the house. Another line for under the house. Now I'm going to do the doorway. I'm going to start with the top. The frame, the top frame of the doorway. Okay. Hope I'm not moving too fast. I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna do this. So, because that would be actually be a leg of the house that this would be sitting on. So I closed that. Now I'm gonna draw the line here, which is the bottom of the frame. The bottom frame, side frame to the door, and another piece of wood for the other side of the door. Okay. Now let's take our skinny sharpie, our skinny pen sharpie, and draw lines indicating this being dark in there, being a little dark. And I do draw, I know I do my lines pretty fast. I don't worry about whether they cross over the bigger lines. I don't worry if they touch. I just draw them. Okay. So that tells us it's a little dark in there. If you want to make it darker, go ahead and fill in some more lines. We're just telling the viewer it's a little dark in there. That's all. Okay. Shadowy. Now we have to draw the ramp going up. So the ramp is just going to be a piece of wood. Where's my pencil? There it is. It's just going to be a piece of wood, maybe not that fat. But we're going to draw it at the side a little bit, on its side just a little. So two lines at an angle. A line at the top means it's the <laughs> finishes the board. A line at the top and at the bottom finishes the board. But now we need steps. We need something for the bunnies to grab onto. So we're going to draw three little pieces of wood. Going across. Okay. Let's 
grab the big marker. piece of wood first. It doesn't matter, it's okay. Okay. And the steps. What the bunnies would grab onto to push themselves up. Push and pull themselves up. Okay, let's cut everything out now. You can erase if you like. I'm not worried. I'm just gonna do it. Again, don't be too particular about the cutting. It doesn't have to be any version, any version of perfect, excuse me. Just cutting around. So there's the little ladder, or the step up, the walkway up, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to cut it. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot in this. We need to put in um, uh, shingles because this is a wood hutch. We need to put up shingles so that the wood is protected. Just like this. Okay. We're not going to make them even. We're just going to do them. So the shingles are just pieces of wood that are put onto, say, plywood. They kind of protect them, but here, I'm not so sure anybody cared very much. They just kind of threw this, my feeling is, they kind of threw this little um, hutch together. So we're going to just throw our rectangles on it, the pieces of wood, the shingles. They should overlap a little bit. Some can be skinny, some can be fat. Some can be short. Some can be tall. We don't really have to go all the way over to the end of the piece of paper when we're drawing them. This is going to fit behind the uh, top hat. There's the shingles. So actually, you know what? Do I want to take this skinny one? Yeah, we'll take the fat one. So I'm going to take my fat pen Draw them in. And then I'll show you a trick I like to do once we get them all drawn in. And again, I don't connect all the lines. Sometimes they overlap, sometimes they're uneven. Sometimes I like to take my skinny pen too, kind of go over things when I want them to look old and weathered or tired and worn out. Or I just want to make them more interesting. I'm putting in a little bit of shading. Maybe that's too much detail. I don't know. I'm putting lines in between the shingles. Again, maybe that's too much detail, but it's okay. 
so I can always do it again. But do you see how I've drawn extra lines with my skinny pen? And it makes it look a little bit more weathered, more tired. Okay, let's cut this out. Leaving white space between your scissors and the black lines. How are we doing for time? Oh, we got plenty of time. doing big chunky cuts because I can't quite see what I'm doing. There we go. Now I can. <laughs> oh, there we go. fancy eraser tonight. My fancy white eraser. I got it at a, an architectural store, I think, or an art supply store. Put my pink eraser somewhere, my favorite eraser. I can't find it now. Okay, so we're going to glue these two together. Let's make sure that they're e even or even-ish. Could have made the bottom of the hutch a little bit bigger, but it's okay. Oh, I know what I can do to make sure that they're even. I can line this up on the bottom of my um, my cardboard here because we want the the bottom of the um, top hat and the bottom of the hutch, the leg of the hutch to sit on the ground together. So now I've made sure that they're even. And let's glue them together. Yeah, I definitely should have made this end bigger. That's okay. You can always do it again. So, let's see, what are we going to do next? Next, I think, we're going to do the background. And we've done the background before. We've done bushes before in other videos. So why don't we do that really quick. I'm going to take these lines off. No, sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, I forgot a couple of things. No, we're not going to do the background yet. Maybe we'll wait. We'll do that in the next video. I forgot we've got to put down this board so they can get in and out. And I think with this, we don't have to really make it even um, with the bottom of the... We don't have to make it even with the bottom of the top hat and that leg. When we get this to stand up, maybe it'll be good if this is sticking out just a little bit, if it curves up. So let's glue that little doodad on, shall we? We want to leave it a little above the edge of, of the frame. Okay. And move mine over a tiny bit. Okay, we're going to do that. And I forgot, what we also want to do is add some grass to the leg of the hutch. 
So we've got grass growing over here, but we don't have grass growing there. That looks silly. So let's draw some grass. And again, it's just a few lines. Just a few lines. Maybe a few more. Just like that. Cutting it out. Being a little bit more careful with this <clears throat> than I normally am. But it's okay. However you want to cut it out, it's okay. Oh, that's going to look really cool. So we're going to glue this to the bottom. We're going to take that and glue it right there. Okay? And I tell you what, since we, we've really gotten this done in a good in a pretty quick amount of time, let's draw one bunny rabbit, shall we? Um, let's ha see how we do with one bunny rabbit. We're not going to draw, draw Jack right now. We're going to draw one of his brothers or sisters. Okay? So let's start off. I've got another piece of scrap paper. We're just going to start off with an ovaly circle-y shape. Okay? Just like that. Then because we want to know how this figure is standing, we're going to draw a, mid, a line right down the middle like a lollipop. We want to know how tall he's going to be, so we're going to draw the bottom. He's going to be sitting down. So that's where his sitter's going to be. He's going to have two ears. They won't be that long, but there's two ears. So it's a lollipop with a straight line on the bottom for a sitter and then two lines sticking out. It's just to give us an idea. Now to draw his head, he's actually going to have a straight line down that way. It's going to lead to his neck and then his shoulder, which is going to be a line coming out this way and then down this way. Then he's kind of got his legs sitting off to the side while he's sitting down. So it's a almost like an oval and not at the same time. It's, I like to give it a sharp line when it's coming down to his knee. And then there's his foot. His little oval foot. It looks kind of tall. That's a big bunny. That's okay. Well, you know, mm, no. Let's shrink him up a bit. Sorry about that. That was my fault. We're going to redraw the bottom. I want him to be a little bit smaller. I don't want him to be a gigantic bunny rabbit. I'm going to redraw his knee or his leg off to the side. And then his foot again. Okay. And I kind of want his head to come down. So I'm going to draw a line like that. Straightening out that oval. And I want him to be, look like he's looking down. So I'm putting his eye just to the side and down. I'm not really going to define his face much, because I don't feel like it. Um, what I'm going to do is have his one of his paw, his left paw, over where his nose would be, like he's scratching his face. 
And then his other leg, let me see, how did that come down a little bit? And have his other leg in that shape. Like an upside down J. Okay. I'm going to give him another paw, and this one's going to be just dangling down there, almost like an oval, more like an egg shape. So his leg came down like an upside down J, his left leg, now he's going to have a foot. So I pull that, pull that line in just a little bit, and then come up. Just basic, basic shapes. Now I'm going to give him an ear. And I'm going to draw, remember we drew that one line sticking out like an antenna. I'm drawing a second line that's running perpendicular to it, or horizontal, or right next to it. And we're going to draw the bottom of the ear. It has a little bit of a curve to it. It's kind of a very big ear. I like bunnies with big ears. We're going to take that line, that's our original line. We're going to draw one next to it, kind of on top of it. We're going to come up at a little bit of an angle, curving down. Just like that. So there's, uh, where is it? There's our original line. Oops, sorry. There's our original line. There's the line we drew perpendicular to it. Then we kind of went at an angle here, rounded that off, drew an angle there, and then kind of curved it right underneath. Really easy. Okay. And that's kind of we're gonna now we're gonna do the inside of the ear. And you can stick with the original line that looked like the antenna, or you can lift it a little bit, like I just did. Okay, let's grab our pen and draw our bunny. I like to start with the eye. Boy, I drew big ears on that bunny. That's okay. side of the ear. There's the left side of his face. There, sorry, now you can see it better. The left side of his face. There's the back of his head. Is a needle shoulder. This is his shoulder going down his back to his leg. His knee sticking out, his foot, his right foot. His sitter going to his left foot. I want you to really look, see the lines, how uneven they are, and that they don't always connect. All right, I want you to take note of that. There's his, the left side of his body. Here comes his knee. Oop, and I made sharp angles for his left knee, and it's okay. Let's do the paw over his face. And his other paw. Okay, now 
we're going to fill in. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to bother with his chin. Um, oh, maybe I will. So I'm going to draw his chin, which we have little lines for, pencil lines for. I just followed them. We'll get just a couple of dots and a line. All right. If you want to, you can erase some of this, some of the pencil marks. I'm not too worried about it. And then I'm going to draw pencil lines in his eye. There. Uh, pencil lines. Sorry, pen lines in his eye. Just to darken it up a bit. And now we're going to cut it out. This is really one of my favorite scenes to draw. And remember, this is just where Jack grew up. Um, in my stories, something happens and he, he leaves home and he ends up living on his own, like all the story characters in my books. They look like grown-ups, even though they're kids. And he has a house that's a hole in the ground, like a rabbit. He made his own rabbit run. Alright, there he is. There's our bunny. So, we're getting, we're running out of time, but we've got enough to, time to do this. Let's make our scene again. Um, I got a lot of scrap paper. But I think today I'm going to use a toilet roll for part of this to help hold it up. I'm going to curve it. Usually we use uh, scrap paper, but I just happen to have an extra toilet roll. Oops, I don't want to put that much glue on there. Paper buckle. Yeah, I'm using the toilet roll just on one side. This is a little big, a little heavy. really all it needs, come to think of it. It doesn't need much more than that. Let's see. That's really all it needs. Piece of tape. the way the boardwalk kind of bends a little bit. There. All right. Now let's get the bunny to stand up. And that's just going to be a piece of scrap paper rolled up. Just like we always do. We always do. Don't put too much glue on there. But if you do, it's okay. Oop. Gluing it to the bottom of the roll. See? See? 
he sitting good? Is he sitting on his sitter? There we go. <laughs> and we did it. Okay. All right. In the next video, we'll finish up. We'll do the background. We'll add more bunny rabbits and see what else happens. Maybe we'll make a flower pot. Maybe we'll make a little pot of flowers to go there, too. That would be fun. That would be really fun. Anyway, there we are. Ta-da! Don't forget that you can, once you're done drawing it, you can photocopy it if you have a copier. And then uh, you can color it multiple times, make it multiple times. Or whatever. Whatever you choose to do. All right. We'll do this again soon. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao, bunny. Ha, ha, ha.